uh, you guys are going to have to help me out on this one today. Uh, it's been a while. I know we've had some of our buddies saying, are you guys all right? Has the band broken up? We haven't. We're just busy, I guess. <laughs> Skyler went camping. Jimmy did stuff in storms and stayed up late and m- missed hours of sleep with the time change, and I've just been working. And so we are back, and there are really two really exciting pieces of news that have released since the last time we've been together talking about stuff. So got the note from Jimmy saying it was like one word with many exclamation points. I think it said chargers, charging, it something like that. Charging. So, I mean, I, you can go to the map and just to kind of get an idea. I mean, they're, they're talking about, you know, 3,500 chargers, uh, 600 sites by the end of 2023. Um, and, you know, if you just take a quick look at this, uh, mm. your, your major highways, uh, cross country routes. I mean, they've got a pretty good coverage to include uh, the Upper Peninsula in Michigan, which mm-hmm. is uh, kind of a neglected area. And then even uh, I think that's I 90 up through North Dakota, mm. uh, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, they've got a, a really good plan and uh, and this is a good, you know, this is a starting point. I mean, you know, 2023, we're not that far away from, from the end of 2023. I as know. As crazy as that sounds. And, uh, and the fact that, uh, they're hitting the ground running with, uh, 3,500 sites, uh, 10, I think, uh, if you scroll a little further down, uh, 10,000, um, total sites, uh, and I'm, I'm probably jumping away around here. Yeah, the 10,000 chargers planned by the end of 2023 when it comes to the level twos, uh, the Rivian waypoints. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, there's going to be coverage everywhere. And the waypoints are, is going to be similar to Tesla's destination chargers, if you're familiar, uh, malls, shopping centers, restaurants, hotels, um, movie theaters, that kind of thing. And, and even that, at you know, 11 and a half kilowatt hours of charging speed, I mean, you're looking at uh I think 25 miles an hour. Okay. Um, charge approximately. It's going to be, the, it's, it looks like the same charger basically with a screen that you'll have for the home for at home use. Mm. I, I mean, I, I keep saying, I've said it a hundred times. I think every episode that we shoot, I say, this is exciting or that's exciting or I can't wait probably 15 times. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there, it, it, I guess the, the, the evolution of all of this, it's funny, you know, when, when this got started and, and uh, Skyler, you and you and Kyle, you both saw this sooner than I did. But you know, they had talked about the Rivian Adventure Network, which we didn't know that was the name at the time, was going to be kind of a a fill in. It was going to fill in those gaps that the other uh, CSS or CCS charging stations didn't hit, and and you know, fill in those gaps, the state parks and some of those other areas. And now you're seeing where the complete 180 mm-hmm. and instead of, you know, a couple hundred charging stations throughout the United States, we're seeing thousands and thousands of mm-hmm. charging stations in their, in their plan. I would agree. I'm going to hand it over to Skylar, see what his reaction is, but to just sort of hand it off. Um, I've said I'm excited too, but to me, this is one of the big ones. Uh, I, as, as excited as I've been. And I, I love the next story up, which we'll talk about the guides as well. I think it's really cool. Mm-hmm. But I think this is one instance of the kind of famed Rivian approach of under promise and over deliver uh, just because of the tune that they were singing a year ago, as you just mentioned, Jimmy uh, was, mm-hmm. was not this tune. It was like, yeah, we'll fill in the gaps, but then rely on third party. Right. And then, uh, in the spring, we heard, oh, well, we might do more than that. And then now it's like full-blown network and f- fast. I mean, like you said, 2023, uh, that'll be here in a blink. Uh, I'll get s- some reaction from Skylar. And then, Jimmy, I'd love to ask you, because I know you've already been on chat for sure w- with uh, Rivian support. I I know you. I know that you've probably <laughs> at least <laughs> chatted in a couple times by now. Oh, it, <laughs> so it, it, I want to hear maybe if you uncovered anything else besides just the article there. But Skylar, are you impressed these days with this news, or you yeah, like? So yeah, so I'm I'm actually a bit surprised. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a lot more for the Rivian Adventure Network, with it, which is the fast charging network. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. That's way more sites than than I was expecting. And I was expecting them to be in more isolated areas. But 
um, without a doubt, they are covering major kind of north, south or east, west uh, interstate or highway corridors, mm-hmm. which is going to allow you to to get from place to place. And I know that uh, Wyoming and Montana have been mentioned as, you know, very, very sparse as it relates to charging. Like maybe I can't make it from mm. from one point in the state to another. And it looks like the, the Rivian Adventure Network is going to be able to address that along with really, I mean, you can see where there's higher concentrations of chargers. They're they're in adventure us areas, so mm-hmm. pretty cool. Um, the other thing, one other kind of technical detail that that jumped out at me was it says you know charging speeds on that Rivian Adventure Network, the fast charging of two hundred kilowatt, potentially three hundred mm-hmm. kilowatt in the future, and. That leaves me with more questions, but <laughs> um, suffice to say, I mean, still 200 kilowatt charging is is very fast. Mm-hmm. And then the uh, just another kind of related news article from today as it relates to the Rivian Waypoint chargers, which are the level two chargers. The the state of Colorado and and Rivian just announced today that I believe it's either, I I think it's 42 state parks are going to have two Uh of the Rivian Waypoint chargers each. And those are going to be open to all vehicles. The other thing that's interesting about the the Rivian Adventure Network is that all of the DC fast charging is going to be, at least at first, dedicated to Rivian vehicles and Rivian customers. That's good stuff there. Um, I'll hop in here and then we'll, we'll uh, let's talk a little bit about home. I'll tee that up for one of you guys because uh, we've kind of mentioned the first two parts, but then we'll talk about home, which isn't as big of a deal as the network itself. Um, but I would agree you see these interstates here. I mean, I just love that Springfield, Illinois is going to have something, which is, <laughs> I mean, awesome. I got to wonder, my next question is where is it going to be? But, you know, seeing these, uh-huh. I know that this is I-55 right here. So uh, it does look like it's spaced out really nicely. And I know all these towns around here. So uh, super, super cool. 20 minutes We'll get 140 miles of range for those who don't really care about uh, kilowatts. But uh, I get down here to home. Any new information from that? Yeah, I was just going to say chatting in today um, kind of got a little bit more uh, detail on the wall charger uh, for the house. Uh, if you want, uh, there's going to be two, basically two options. You're going to have a wired a direct wire and then a plug-in version. Uh, the plug the plug-in version is going to be right about four. I'm guessing many say about forty amps, uh, similar to the speed of the portable charger. So you're looking at about sixteen miles of range added per hour. Mm-hmm. And then if you wanted the hardwired the hardwired version, that's where you'll get the full eleven and a half kilowatts. Which, if my uh, Google app or my google search works is going to be approximately 50 amps uh, which is the max current that the charger can take um but that's that's strictly on the rivian the rivian wall charger where you're at right now kyle so Mm -hmm. with the portable charger you will only get 16 no matter what okay based off of based off of the way that yeah so and and there's the little loop of the portable charger Mm -hmm. the website so the portable charger is 32 amps a um plug-in version charger is going to be 40 amps on a 50 amp circuit and then the the hardwired version is going to be a 48 amp charger on a 60 amp circuit so yeah i mean we're looking at estimated 16 miles per hour of charge for the portable, probably 20 for the the wall charger that you plug in, and then 25 with the one that you hardwire in. Gotcha. Awesome. What are they talking about down here? They, uh, we see a good little night mode here. 
keep seeing that more and more now that now that we uh, know to look for it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um. It looks like, did they mention anything about like the app? Oh, there it is. The Rivian app. You yep, can so, monitor your vehicle's uh, charge status in real time. Go ahead, Jimmy. Yeah. Yep, yeah. So uh, towards the top, when they start talking about the chargers, I mean, it's, they're going to have every single charging network be available on the Rivian app. Okay. So e- EA, EVgo, Blink, uh, Volta, you, like any of them are going to be on there to the point where they're in one of the, the little um, footnotes underneath the pictures, I think back again, back towards like the level two, level three areas, they actually talk about how to, you'll be able to see availability, uh, rate of charge, and then even be able to uh, authorize and initiate mm-hmm. payment all from the Rivian app without even having, yeah, right there, all without even having to open up your cell phone and scroll through all the other charge apps for uh, EV charging uh, to figure out which one you're at and then make it happen. This is supposedly going to link all of them together, which is a sweet touch for sure. Very nice touch for sure. The the one thing that I keep asking and I keep getting the same answer though, and I really hope it's the it's the case is, it's been a really long time since we've seen the daytime running light as a charge indicator. Mm. And I keep getting the same answer that it's still there, but they have they haven't shown that thing, and it it feels like a year. And it might have only been two months, but we've yeah. been we've been waiting for at least eighteen years at this point to get this truck. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I but, do. Uh, I do see the few pictures here back on the, the side have, have been just right around the charge port again, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, exactly. Anything else as far as highlights yeah. here for, for the Adventure Network? Yeah, I'll say a couple of things. And and Jimmy just mentioned it. And I'm, I'm curious, Jimmy, did Rivian Customer Service uh, provide you all of those third-party CCS partners? No. Did they no, they those? They didn't mention any of them, but I mean, I asked the question, every time I asked the question, I used the word all in caps just to like make sure. And I, I did list out some of them, um, but they, they kept saying all. Um, so I don't know. So- I, I think it's, I think it's interesting. It's very similar to the Ford pass. If you're familiar with the Ford pass, like they, they kind of grouped everybody together and created this all encompassing network that works with all of, or most at least, but I, uh, I, I don't know. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I, I was curious about that because there's just one small little sly mention of it on that page. And it's actually with regards to the navigation and mm-hmm. charging being built into the navigation, but it mentions their CCS partners However, Correct. they didn't mention which ones or anything else. So I'm curious right. when we'll hear about uh, formalized partnerships and, and what that's going to look like. The, the other major thing that, that was mentioned in, on, on this page, Kyle, is mm-hmm. that pricing and programs will be available mm-hmm. later. Yep. Yeah, obviously a good indication that we're going to have to pay for it. And mm-hmm. the, the question, once again, is how much? Mm-hmm. You know, it's curious if that's Rivian's version of using the word programs, if that's Rivian's way of saying a membership or some kind of uh, annual subscription that you'll pay similar to what uh, Electrify America. And I think EV goes even got one now where you pay four dollars a month or whatever it is for the lower tiered pricing. Mm-hmm. Um not but, quite sure. I, I did. I did ask that question today, and the answer I got was, uh, "You know as much as I know." <laughs> yeah, yeah. I figured the answer you would have got is more details will be available closer <laughs> to. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, so true. Thirty five hundred <laughs> at six hundred sites by the end of twenty twenty three. So, man. That's uh, they're gonna giddy up. What is mm-hmm. it? It's March right now, so March halfway through March too. By the way, like over halfway through. Twenty months then. Mm-hmm. Six hundred sites in twenty months. 
So behind the scenes this whole time, they've been working on real estate and all that kind of stuff. I did see where they're going to be all solar and wind powered uh, as available, uh, most of them, and then the credits otherwise, right? So, mm -hmm. whew. No mention of bidirectional charging or vehicle to grid, unfortunately. I, I read that thing. I read it a hundred times. I control f you know, <laughs> looking for any... Um, did you so control nothing, F in the source code? Like looking for hidden I messages? I did not control F in the source code looking for oh. hidden messages. Okay. <laughs> but uh, definitely no, definitely no bi-directional or vehicle to grid at this point. So I'm hoping that, uh, that that is a thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. man. Me, me too. And I, I forgot to mention that, but I, yeah, I want that to be a part of Rivian's, you know, home charging solution. Um, all right. So anything first, else on the notes that you guys see on your own notes about this topic or anything uh, pop in your head? Otherwise, we just need to ask the people uh, watching to uh, chime in below and some comments and let us know what you thought and what we missed. And uh, if you're excited and kind of any insights that you guys might have, let us know if you hear anything different from customer service on your 20 times chatting in today yeah uh one more thing I, I forgot to mention i did ask about the portable charger and how long it was from end to end and it's 18 feet if, if anybody's interested 18 feet that's pretty good is that uh comparable to what you have for the tesla uh it's it's about right yeah <laughs> 18 to 20 feet approximately i mean any more than that and it's just bunched up somewhere and i think any less than that and you're having to hop over it, depending mm -hmm. on. And and that that makes me think of one more observation, just about the the wall charger, and wow. it's that the the top of the wall charger is kind of slanted uh, mm -hmm. from front to back, that allows you to have integrated cable management. If mm -hmm. that makes sense, mm -hmm. so you loop your yep. cable up over it, and there you go. You've got a picture up. Yep. Um, so I, I, I thought that was pretty slick. The other thing is apparently there is a receptacle on the side of the, the home wall charger that, yep. that holds the connector itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right there. there yep. You go. Yep. Yeah, they definitely do a great job of, uh, I mean, all these installations are probably on a fake wall, but I mean, the, there's no input cable, mm. you know, so I mean, uh, it definitely would be nice to see where that cable is coming out of the box versus uh, what we get to see here. Mm -hmm. So, Jimmy, I have a technical question for you. I have, oh. I have a, a very non-technical answer. Go for it. <laughs> how do you how do you build a fake wall? <laughs> you know, like, you know, you know what I mean. I mean, there's nothing. <laughs> I'll stop it. I know, but you know me. It's all good. All yep, right. Yep. I thought you were going to ask Jimmy uh, if he was surprised that there is a Rivian compass on this thing. <laughs> uh, no, and I'm sure if you look closely, there's one on the side of the cable too. I know. Uh, the, uh, the side of the uh, 1772 head. I'm sure. Can't believe there's only one. There should be at least 40 on there. Uh, at least for sure. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you get a chance, please check us out at rivianstories.com and every like, subscribe, and share helps. Thanks again.